Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. Do you want to hear a story? I'm not letting go. Are you ready for this? Follow your heart. I'm going in. This. This is. This is. Blockbuster Smash Up. Welcome to the first episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. Smash. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and I'm joined by my co-host, Todd G. Levin. Hello. Todd and I are here yes. to play a wonderful game with you all <laughs> called Blockbuster Smash Up, a game that came from our previous podcast, Blockbuster Punch Up. And how the game works is Todd and I and our special guests will sit down and smash up two films that should not touch. Mm. Now, these films are not similar in nature. In fact, one is a globally accepted good film. The other and one is, is a, a globally accepted bad film. Real bad, usually. Just, just terrible. And Todd and I and our guests will create a brand new film for you with a beginning, middle, and end in real time based on those two movies. We have no other choice. It's pretty weird. It, it'll get really weird. And guys, this episode does get really, really weird. It's pretty heavy, man. It does. I mean, everybody <laughs> learns life lessons. Everyone comes out a better a better person from it <laughs> do they <laughs> and then after that we like to play a quick game with our guests and wrap up the episode so without further ado let's get to the very first episode of blockbuster smash up and meet our guests guys we're here on uh blockbuster smash up with our uh, awesome guests Tom. yeah here we are and here are our guests. <laughs> Here's our guests. Solid. They'll never You're stop. You're doing it. Solid. Such a good... Just think, letter in front of another letter. <laughs> so across from me is... Well, they're both across from me. What did I say? You so close. So killing. close to the name, though. <laughs> so close. Okay, so one is uh, my friend Jake Whitener. Welcome, Jake. Thank you. Thanks How for having me. How are you? This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, of course. What? <laughs> of, of course. course. It's awesome. Of course it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's fucking jimmy over there okay fuck you guys okay fuck you okay? Here. no but of course uh, we here we have uh, jimmy ambrose is our other guest Yay! thank you for having me this is wonderful <laughs> of course <laughs> of course so now we got that out of the way good job nailed it Tom. good job everybody <laughs> we cool. did that together so we'd like to kick things off getting to know you guys a little bit better what was your first r-rated film Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Tales from the, what is that? What's Tales from the Dark Side? Uh, it stars Steve Buscemi and like 50 other, uh, Christian Slater. It's 50 other Christian Slaters. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's Darth Vader's personal short stories no, that it, he wrote No, Tales from himself. the Dark Side was a short-lived, <laughs> failed TV show trying to be a Twilight Zone. And I think maybe Julianne Moore is in it. Like the cast Whoa. list is insane. And it's three short stories based around two children kidnapped by, in like a hand Hansel and Gretel situation. Maybe it's one boy, and it's one of the Lawrence brothers. Yes. So this is like <laughs> super nineties. Yes. And like the the way he stays alive is he keeps telling this crazy old woman that's gonna eat him uh, scary stories. That's and how he stays James alive. James Remar is in one. Wow. There's three stories. One. It's about James Remar potentially becoming a gargoyle. <laughs> um, one about a hitman who's employed to kill a cat. <laughs> Whoa, those stories are real different. I love this third movie so is much. Is Steve Buscemi and Christian Slater start turning their college friends into mummies. <laughs> oh my Whoa. god! Okay, this I this sounds like an movie. amazing movie. I know. I have it, to see it. It is little known. It's one of those movies where I probably saw it when I was like eight or nine years old and it terrified the fuck out of me because like there's like like imagine those three ideas and like a years later like in high school I was like oh my god i used to be so scared i'm gonna find that movie so I, i'm That's pretty amazing. sure it's rated r it may not be rated r. it may not be a movie i it might have been a dream i had a couple years ago it's rated it's rated g and it includes a scene of a man holding a shotgun blowing a cat's face off <laughs> it was a video i saw on Lively. But it was before Gremlins. So. Before Gremlins, so it's it's fine. And sir, what is yours? My maybe so, I should use your name because people cannot see that I'm pointing at you. <laughs> Please, Jake, and you not tell you. us what is your rated R film. Well, Jurassic Park was one of my favorite movies, and my parents. I remember we went to Blockbuster, and there was a movie with a dinosaur on the cover. <laughs> and it was how a lot of it was called choices Carnos at Blockbuster. <laughs> Carnosaur, Carnosaur two. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Carnosaur, but you were like, I don't need to know the backstory. I'm just in for dinosaur. Let's go number two. That was actually my thought process because Carnosaur was all checked out, but there oh. were still some copies of Carnosaur <laughs> but too. You're, 
<laughs> but you were like, no matter what, I'm watching a dinosaur I movie need to watch tonight. A dinosaur movie. Oh my god! And my parents were like, "Fuck it!" <laughs> so they rented it, and I had a TV in my room. I was maybe five years old, maybe six, maybe younger, and maybe I was I, I had a real, I had a real <laughs> maybe three, I had a maybe, maybe two, two. <laughs> maybe um, one. My understanding of time as a child was very interesting. <laughs> maybe I was nine. Sometimes I had birthdays. Sometimes not. Uh, but I remember putting the movie in the in the VCR and just started watching it and just being like, oh my god, because <laughs> it's it's literally showing dinosaurs tearing people apart. Where like Jurassic <laughs> Park will kind of cut away or they'll like right. put something to obstruct it. Or they'll just eat part- a guy in a toilet, which is funny. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's kind <laughs> of funny. It's kind of silly. But this was like people's guts getting ripped out. Oh jeez. And- well, we got to know you guys a little bit better, and that'll be taking us right into the main segment. Blockbuster Smash Up. Smash, 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 so the way we do this is we take uh, a globally accepted uh, good film and a globally accepted bad film and we smash them together. And make a really weird movie. And like create another film based off of kind of like the stuff that was going on in both of those and the weirder the better and all that. That's the whole point. And it's going to be a coherent movie. I mean, we're going to have a cold open, we're going to have a plot, <laughs> and then we're going to have a finale. Gonna and it's going to make least. perfect sense. <laughs> so. so so Jay has picked the... Uh, globally accepted good film. Yeah, and I've picked the globally accepted bad film and neither of us know what the other one has and that's how you play the game so yeah here we go i guess on the count of three yeah let's let's say the movies okay one two three toy story man Toy Story and, and Encino, Encino Man. Man? Yeah. Which one? Wait, which of you had the good one? And which of you? Had the good one? <laughs> <laughs> Toy Story, such I'm a piece of sure shit. Pretty sure last time I checked, Encino Man is pretty good. It is not a good movie. It's amazing. It's it's terrible, but it's so ridiculous, and that's what the '90s did. I actually don't remember okay. the plot of Encino Man. Okay, yeah. we'll get ready. Encino Man is like a 1997 movie. About go, say no more. All right, <laughs> let's get on my movie. Yeah, you know, don't spoil anymore. Let's yeah. not. Let's do not do that. About uh, these two doper friend guys. One is like a more normal guy. One's more like you know dopey kind of like uh, stoner guy. Okay. Uh, played by Sean Astin and Pauly Shore. Great. In the in the he height, was in all of those movies in the height of weasel fame. You know, <laughs> find after an earthquake. A man, a caveman in a block of ice Wait in their second. pool. Is this the movie with Brendan Fraser as a caveman? Who is Brendan Fraser? Oh my oh. god, yes, I know what this movie is. Who they then uh you know, they're not they're not very popular, these two guys. That's and right. they then uh you know, and one of them has a crush on a girl, and they basically like dig this guy out and they thaw him out. He's a caveman from prehistoric days. They introduce him to nineteen ninety seven uh Southern California and take him to high school where he's a big hit, makes them all like really no. Like, no one questions who this stranger <laughs> is. Actually, they, they do, and they just do say they? that he's a foreign exchange yeah, student from Estonia. Estonia. <laughs> wow. And his name. And his name Were is they Link. winking when they said that? And they name him Link, as in, like, Link. missing Link, you That's know? That's right. So yeah. they call him Link. So Brent, it's just this ridiculous movie. So two assholes introduce one nice person just trying to fit in <laughs> <laughs> and just rip into his life. You're going to be named Link. You're going to be from Estonia. Yeah. It's a very strange way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The mo- They're mentally scarring this I, poor man. That's one mo- angle. Yeah. As a movie about a fr- frozen caveman, I can see how you'd feel that the moral obligation to <laughs> let him continue to be a caveman is <laughs> prescient when they choose a name for him. <laughs> and like shave his, you know, Like face King Kong or... is obviously about slavery and Sino Man is also about, about simulation. slavery. <laughs> Oh God. Uh, the way that's, how the, that's how they pitched it in the studio, right? They're like, you know, I think King this is Kong? a really important oh, movie. Oh, that really racist movie? Yeah, we're going to do this it is in, There's like a character that's the, the boyfriend of the uh, the girl that they like, who like is trying to like prove that it's a caveman, you know? He's like on the trail. So he's know? our hero. So he's like... <laughs> in the, <laughs> very weird in the, sh- on this movie. in the shitty dark version that you're talking about, yeah. My reverse Encino Man movie. In the no fun version, <laughs> that is what's going on, yeah. He's an oppressed caveman man by these two assholes <laughs> and one genius guy is trying to prove them <laughs> prove this right so basically the guy comes and he proves that he's a caveman the plan backfires in his face everybody actually likes that he's a caveman thinks it's really cool everybody makes up and everything's cool and they have a giant they they go into an impromptu caveman dance what <laughs> 
No, at the, at the school, it's at the prom. That actually that's, happened. That's what happens. And then they go back to the home, and it's after this. You know, there's an earthquake that occurs, mm-hmm. and they see some of the same things when they saw when Brendan Fraser came out. There was like some weird stuff going on everywhere, and uh, they go into the bathroom, and in the bathtub is a cave woman, which was Encino Man's girlfriend back in the day. So he was cheating the whole. So movie. he now has. Well, he thought that everyone was dead. There's a great. There's actually <laughs> a out. really good scene where they go to a natural history museum, and he like the full weight of it. Oh my god, all, everyone's dead because he's sees all these like dead cavemen and everything like this kind of a good scene you know jimmy i agree with you this probably is a good movie (laughs) that's encino man oh and also in europe they they refer to it as California Man. Really? <laughs> Which I kind of love. <laughs> what? People, because people don't know what they Encino is. They didn't realize is, you know? that there was a caveman in the movie. They're like, that's how Californians are. <laughs> that's right? That's exactly well, how Well, because like, are. you know, Pauly Shore, like the whole like style of the movie is like American 90s high school California kind of thing. So oh, that's yeah. What well, I, you know. whatever, squeezing the juice. But I could just imagine, you know. It's wheezing the juice. Wheezing the juice. Wheezing <laughs> the juice. So sorry, Fun listeners. Fun fact. Brendan Fraser reprises his role as Link the Caveman in Several another other movies, yeah. uh, Polly Shore movie. All right, well, my movie was <laughs> my movie was Toy Story. Toy Story is a movie about toys. They they are real. They come to life when you're not in the room with them. So yeah. any any toy you have in any household, and it's a uh, about the main character is named Woody. He's a cowboy toy, and he's been with this kid named Andy for his uh, for most of his toy life, and he loves Andy, and he loves playing with Andy, and one day. Woody gets shown up by a new toy named Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear shows up thinking he's actually a spaceman and proceeds to wreak havoc upon the other toys because he's breaking all these kind of toy laws and they just want to worship and play with Andy and Buzz is just not having it. But eventually they brainwash Buzz to believe in their toy theory. Uh, no, that's not that's not the, <laughs> Again, that's not the, the theme lens behind the through movie. which you watch, watch movies. <laughs> movies. No, it's a great film where uh, Woody and Buzz eventually become friends and Buzz accepts that he's a toy and they have to go on this hair-raising adventure to get back to Andy because he's moving while they're yeah. uh, they're having this feud and they have to make sure that they're with the moving vehicles or they'll be lost forever and uh, they get caught up in this neighbor who's trying to destroy toys, this evil kid, this basically evil Andy on the other side of the fence and uh, they finally reunite with Andy at the end and become best friends. Aww. And that's the story of Toy Story. That's ador- So how in the hell are Do we, we going to smash Toy Story and Encino Man? <laughs> both of these Does movies. anyone want to take the cold open of Encino <laughs> Man and Toy Story? <laughs> Okay, I've got I've got an out there approach. Go for your out there. Okay, open on a frozen tundra, and there are cavemen. They're carrying with them like a like a giant animal of some kind, you know. Yeah. And they go back, and their kid is like in the cave. It's like dinner time, you know. They're like making dinner. When the kid leaves, all of her like dolls that are like made of sticks and shit and like rocks and whatever, okay. like come alive and they start like talking to one another and everything. And then there's this massive earthquake. The fire that they were using to like create dinner just gets snuffed out. And that's the cold opener and it cuts to black. But that's then right. cut to Andy's room. And then in the future, <laughs> and then it says like 2,000 years later or like 20,000 years later. Depending on what you believe. And it's, <laughs> and it's is it Andy's room? It's or Andy's a, room. Yeah, it's Andy's and it's, room. And it starts shaking. <laughs> and then all of a sudden this light opens up from the ceiling and the little stick toys fall into Andy's room. <laughs> and all the toys are like, That's how earthquakes work, guys? Todd. You don't know that? <laughs> <laughs> Earthquakes sometimes create interdimensional rifts in, yeah, in a, reality. Well, exactly. it's like uh, the kid in King Arthur's Court. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, Earthquakes we do a that. lot of weird shit. Yeah, right. nobody really knows about it. <laughs> sometimes it pulls toys Listen, and uh, a, creep people into other dimensions. A kid in King Arthur's Court, Land of the Lost. Yeah. Earthquakes mm-hmm. are dangerous yeah, for international are dangerous travel. Yeah, magical Pacific Rim. Events. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So okay, so a portal opens in Andy's room. Is sure. he, is Andy in the room? He's is he? In no, the room? no. Andy's downstairs. Andy's not. He's not in the room okay exactly he's downstairs having birthday cake (laughs) okay the the portal opens up these toys fall in right in the middle of woody and buzz arguing on who the fuck this new spaceman is yeah but now these new stick toys fall in everyone's like oh wait well who the fuck are these guys like andy got him for his birthday for these (laughs) stick toys yeah and basically these stick toys like when they were alive back in in barbarian time they had no idea what the concept of toys were so they thought they were real like barbarians (laughs) Not barbarians. They thought they were real cavemen, just like everybody else. They weren't aware of the 
aware the of the rules. Yet, the rules. They don't know, know the rules yet about toys. Yeah. yeah. So these are start talking to like Buzz. Like they're agreeing with him. They're like, yes, we are. We are people. Oh, just I don't like think you. they can speak. Oh they, no, <laughs> they're they're cavemen. <laughs> so they're just gonna grunt. Uh, and they have like mini. They have mini like mallets. <laughs> tiny, <laughs> tiny little rock mallets that were made for them. <laughs> yeah, like like mini mallets that, that the kid was like whittling or but whatever. Buzz, like, okay, Buzz. This whole movie has been conv- being convinced by Woody that like he is just a toy, but like that is all tossed away as soon as he sees like a portal open up into the room, <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 this is all real. You've all been lying to me. And yeah, he just space goes, is totally real. He goes like <laughs> ape shit on these like on these. They're villains from Zorg. The, yeah, these cavemen. <laughs> Zerg, and it has Zerg. like we have like an Avengers level like destruction <laughs> battle between Buzz Lightyear and these cavemen toys in in, in Andy's room. And so, at the same time, Woody's going, "What the fuck is going on?" I have one guy who thinks he's a spaceman, and I have these little <laughs> sticks who are like these little monsters. Right. And, and when the cavemen see the toy Tyrannosaurus, they lose their shit. They're like, <laughs> like old yes, enemy, just yes. like you. And then basically killed so many of ours. So this is like the this opening of just like no, 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 and then you know Woody, ever the every man, you know, the corralling everybody gets in the middle, and he's just like, no, listen, guys, like I don't know what just happened. We were just visited by beings from another dimension or some shit. But you know what? We're also talking toys and stuff, so like we can get through this. So this is a really this is a really <laughs> meta, meta version movie, of Toy very Story. Okay, we can totally yeah. get through this, all right? And let's then, have an intellectual conversation about that we are sentient immortal <laughs> toys. They but what that means for us. They <laughs> they stop the cavemen from going after the dinosaur, they stop Bud, Buzz from like trying to kill them or whatever, thinking that they're, you know, like toy Chitari from some another dimension or whatever, right? <laughs> And they ba- and Woody basically like okay we got to teach these cavemen toys how to you know live in 1995 Pixar film and we get world, what we you know? want and you know what we get what we wanted from Toy Story which was a montage of them teaching toys how to be toys and of course their teacher was a Poly Shore biodome action figure <laughs> that helped them become real because we're a crazy toys <laughs> so they're like trying to teach them how to like walk like toys talk like toys in like 95 you know to, these are what to... toys are like and you know in the common <laughs> the 90s era toys <laughs> some of you shoot gax some of you shoot <laughs> unnecessary darts for no reason all of you have karate chop action and every, every one of you everyone has a great theme song and but then there's a stretch armstrong and the little stick things recognize stretch armstrong because like stretch armstrong is hey a, yeah as, as a what as a, as, a, as a caveman he's a caveman toy that's true he's like finally Dead. my brothers have so, arrived exactly <laughs> exactly so these little t- stick toys like gravitate towards stretch armstrong and he's like the leader of the little stick toys now he's like their little king exactly <laughs> so now woody's like well what the fuck is going on because i was the leader of the toys meanwhile one of the toys has started developing a crush on bo peep bo yeah. peep starts having a crush on one of the cavemen and she woody's, was going for buzz for a moment but there's like fuck this guy Woody's These pretty guys. sore about it woody's getting pretty sore about this <laughs> oh, whole yeah. thing you know? getting real salty about those cavemen. what do they name there's like let's say there's two of these toys like what do they name them Twi- Twig- Twiggy and Rock. <laughs> Twigs, Twiggy and Rock. Well, yeah. Andy has to name them. He has to draw something on them. Which, by the way, yeah. What Andy, is Andy? What is Andy, Andy saying to these toys? Andy's a very acceptable child. You know, Andy's yes. really the future of the world. He accepts all things. He's like, you know what? Sometimes yeah. you come into your room and you find new toys, and what you is, just accept that. Shit. Where are these, Mom? Where did these Blair Witch Project toys come from? <laughs> they're, they're the Blair Witch. Dolls. <laughs> they look at the Blair Witch ones with straw tying them together, holding clubs and stones. <laughs> Okay, what's the major, like, there's got to be a conflict so, here. Well, that, as we know, Stretch Armstrong is kind of creating an insurrection in the toy uh, world. Because yeah, yeah. he's he's finally getting the notoriety he thought he's always deserved. Like, people used to like me. I, I mean, I stretch. That's so cool. And nobody appreciates it anymore. And these <laughs> these cavemen toys, like, really appreciate his ability to, like, climb things and get really high because he can stretch. So I think he <laughs> creates an insurrection <laughs> against Woody. <laughs> And where's Buzz and all this now that he he uh, the truth is out there and he knows that, that he's a toy or that he isn't a toy? <laughs> well, that he, he believes maybe that this might be a real kind of thing where they're, he may be from space, you know? Well, maybe he's with Woody now because now they have a common enemy. He's still pissed at the little stick figures. Right. He still so, thinks they're aliens. And there's yeah. like a civil war that starts occurring, you know, people yeah, take like, sides. You yeah. know, Marvel Civil War is right. coming out, yeah. so we have Toy Story Civil War. <laughs> the, the heroes we've always wanted to see finally battle and come to blows can finally fight each other. 
maybe then Woody and and Buzz exile Stretch Armstrong yeah, and the, the Caveman toy. toys. They're just like, get out of here. We don't want you. How dark can this get? Maybe they like burn one of the toys. Hey, there hey, you go. Uh, there and we it, go. And it looks like Wicker Man. One of them's burned, right? One of the mm-hmm. Caveman toys is burned, so there's only one left. Yeah. So then, like, and he's really sad, right? Because he just watched his like you Poor know twigs. brother burn. Yeah. Yeah. Twigs, man. <laughs> so Rock Rocky. So is Rock left, is the right? only one left. Yeah. Rock is left. Him and and Stretch Armstrong are thrown into Sid's yard which is known as like the pit of despair. However, they meet up with all of Sid's mutant toys and they, they're like, at first they're scared, but now they're like, oh, an army. An army to fight Buzz. In. So we really flipped it. Woody and Buzz are the villains. They are the villains movie. of this movie. <laughs> the Rock is really the hero because out of the two of them, so Twiggy was definitely like this more like kind of like, hey, we want to be friends. Like he was like he very was the accepting. fun-loving one. He was the know? fun-loving one, the accepting one. The one that Bo Peep loved. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Exactly. And Rock was always like the very like cerebral one. Like, you know, maybe we are toys. Maybe, maybe. there is more to life than kill lion and dinosaur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So when Twiggy died, it finally snapped for Rock. Mm-hmm. He's just Sling Blade. <laughs> He's just Sling Blade. Andy's toys are like, whew, back to normal in this bitch, okay? So we can Killed just, a bunch of toys, normal can, day for the most evil fucking toys on the block. And maybe Bo-, Bo Peep is really sad about it, and all the other toys are like starting to doubt Woody and Buzz's leadership, but they're kind of like, okay, everything's back to normal. I mean, they did just burn that toy in front of all of us as we chanted. <laughs> In, in the middle of the night, but I feel like I, I feel like we're going down a dark path here. In but the I, I can't of, be sure. In the middle of the night, there's a sound outside that, like, and Andy gets scared and he has to go check it out. Okay. He goes outside the door and the door locks behind him. And one of Stretch Armstrong's giant long arms has like closed and locked the door or whatever. It is like from the window. Reached in through the window. Yeah. And then from the window starts like, you know, and Buzz and Andy are like, what's going on? Like, where did Andy go? And all the scout is up. And then like popping out of like the window and everywhere are like these like Sid's like really creepy toys. And it's an ambush. And they're (laughs) finally going to take Woody and Buzz down. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's an ambush and there's an epic battle. Andy's trying to get back in the room and he can. He's hearing shit in there and he's like, what's going on? So the finale of this movie happens in Andy's room. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big battle battle and a lot of toys die a lot of toy deaths <laughs> bo peep goes down bo peep is just skewered by that baby <laughs> spider mo- creature yeah right and the, there's Mr. one potato head gets mad <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm exactly. So sorry. Uh, uh, the the dog just gets like twisted just all like out of twisted proportion, and pulled apart, <laughs> and he's sitting there on the ground, and, and Woody's just like, no, no. What's the dog's name? Slinky. Slinky. Dog. Slinky. Yeah. And he's like, no, Slink. Woody. And he's just like, just go on without me, Woody. I'm fine. Keep committing toward genocide. And we find out the dog was really a fucking I don't have monster. A spring in my step anymore. <laughs> Woody finds out that there actually is a snake in his boot. Uh, I think, you know. You know what? I think the secret other hero of this movie is going to be Buzz. I think Buzz has to yeah. turn on Woody yeah, at the bu- end. Yeah, Buzz has to turn on Woody. Like, Rock is like, I believe you're a spaceman. And you know what? I think you can help us. Yeah, maybe Rock is, like, looking around, seeing all the, like, the horror and mayhem, and he's just like, not like this. <laughs> Not maybe like maybe Buzz and Woody are like they're in the trenches, like the war is not going that well, and and the Biodome Poly Shore action figure comes over, <laughs> and it's like, oh, reporting, and you know, in like one of those moments, like Woody's so frustrated that he just pulls out a good, not good enough, boom, and he shoots the Poly Shore action figure, <laughs> killing it, and blows the battery and acid out makes, of like, his head. That's what <laughs> makes Buzz makes like propels Buzz to be like, you know, who is the bad guy? And that, yeah, yeah, that will make yeah, him go to yeah, talk yeah to right. Rock, so, Again, yeah. this is a really cerebral it's a deep movie about toys so how so how do rock and buzz kind of put an end to this battle well like they they have to i think woody and buzz fight at the end and i think rock fights the t-rex i think he has to have the final like he has to have an emotional release i think the t-rex kill like bit and ripped apart twig i know we said that he burned him but i feel like he had to have like maybe he burned him and then the t-rex just like Like the t-rex is a henchman i like that and he is a final showdown with the t-rex and and buzz and woody and i think the end of the day buzz and the the rock caveman create like a a a toy utopia but 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 then all of a sudden there's another earthquake (laughs) (laughs) and everyone freaks out no one knows what's happening and then it stops it subsides and they think oh okay everyone's (laughs) seems to be here wait a second where is stretch armstrong cut back to caveman times 
<laughs> the kid's looking for his toys and he runs They've outside. survived. The, ki- the, the family now, of the caveman. Now Stretch Armstrong but... is, well, because as far as, I'm sure, as far as I know, we haven't gone through time. We've gone through a portal. A portal, here. yeah, right. So right. we're now back. Stretch Armstrong is there in caveman times. The child runs in, <laughs> loves it immediately. Same thing, just embraces it. Child <laughs> runs back out. Then all of a sudden, a bearded Woody walks in with a missing an arm and all the battle scars. <laughs> I know this is gonna sound crazy, but you gotta follow me. (laughs) (laughs) Cut to credits. That's an. What's the post credit scene? What's the post credit? Andy's just looking in the middle of his room, and everything is just just destroyed. Yeah, 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 they haven't cleaned up. They just. uh, That's how they reveal the secret. The final cut scene is him coming home, and his whole room is just fucked. He's just staring at all the mayhem. Toys, toys that have been eviscerated. His bed is on fire. Like a piece is like tiny little up. flames <laughs> just everywhere. What's the name of this movie? I in, think in California S- Man is pretty <laughs> much and Encino Toys. <laughs> Who was the one that freed the toys? They called him California Man. <laughs> 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 but that's the name of the the other movie. That's not This is the alternate dimension version of that movie. <laughs> this is like what they actually saw in Europe. Sacramento Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sacramento Toy Story is pretty <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, Sacramento Toy Story. Sacramento Toy Story. <laughs> What's the poster look like? It's gonna have to be. What you is ha- it blue and orange? Definitely blue and orange. Yeah. You have to have like the Darth Vader esque of like Woody's face profiled, profiled in the background. Like in the middle, there's like twigs or a rock is just like in the middle, like holding up his yeah. fist. Thing. You have Bo Peep like holding his on, twig on his leg, leg or his rock <laughs> leg at the bottom. Buzz is like off to the side, like confused, just like I don't know. <laughs> but one toy has to have like the one eyebrow up like hey <laughs> <laughs> to let you know it's gonna be a little fun exactly you know? it's yeah, gonna right. be a little fun this movie it's not just gonna be all about cavemen toys killing other toys i like the idea of like a series of character posters where it's the twig and stone <laughs> in the boxes of the other toys like in a toy store and, like the toys like wait, wait. like when they did with lilo and stitch when that came out or yeah up in all those trailers can you yeah. believe it i'm just a twig and he's just a rock what are we doing <laughs> here wait, wait, wait. Barbie box. wait for marketing the McDonald's toy promotions are just twigs and rocks. Like you open the bag, the pet rock. It's just a pet rock, and it's just a twig in there. I almost want to retroactively change the universe of already made movies so that the twig and the rock never speak. They are just inanimate objects. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like all of this drama is brought on and whenever we see them it's literally just a twig and a rock when the drink is set aflame by Woody it just cuts to the rock just like a rock just and no if, reaction if they, uh, that rope peeps like you the silent that time. makes the final battle <laughs> You can come in my corral anytime. That makes the final battle between the rock and the T-Rex just way more interesting. Because yeah. <laughs> it's just like the T-Rex looking at the rock. We cut away and then there's the rocks falls off the shelf. Just just cracks the T-Rex and then it just, that's it. Just one just long far away shot. <laughs> that's it. What's the, uh, what's the tagline that's on this poster? Yeah. It's got to say something like, you know, between a rock and a hard place. Or <laughs> <laughs> okay, so casting. I casting. mean, Polly Shore plays every character. I think The Rock has to play The Rock, right? The Rock has know. to play The Rock. Or, or Vin he'll, Diesel. He'll have Vin Diesel. either one. Actually, Vin Diesel's really good at only one line. So maybe at the very end, yeah. just like Inception, it we moves, are rock. <laughs> it moves just a little bit and then cuts to black. Right. I think Elijah Wood should make a cameo as the kid in the cave from uh, from the Caveman Times. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's Andy played by? Maybe just Elijah Wood. But as I, Elijah Wood looks right now. Ooh, and that's what you do. Here's what you do. In the end reveal with Stretch Armstrong. Sorry, I'm retroactively going back again. So in the opening <laughs> these are, scene. These are producer notes. We're notes. sitting in a scene. We notes. never see the who's playing with Rock and yeah. Twig. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, find yeah. out that Elijah Wood is an immortal? <laughs> no, but maybe just like he's caveman version. That like of it's Elijah predestined Wood? that this family. Then it becomes... <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Cloud Atlas. Yeah. This is the yeah, beginning this is, of a bigger idea. This is a better version of Cloud Atlas. The toys we play with echo through eternity. <laughs> <laughs> That's the poster. Oh, my God. That's the tagline. That's the tagline on the poster. Sacramento Toy Story. Playing with yourself for 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
my god. Well, that was our smash up, and now, like each episode, we'll play the game, the old family favorite, Mary Fuck Kill. Mary Fuck, Mary Fuck Kill, Mary Fuck. Mary fuck kill, Mary fuck, Mary fuck kill. All right, so this is a little game we like to play at the end of Blockbuster Smash Up. It is played like the classic Mary fuck kill, where you would name three people and say which one you would like to marry, which one you would like to fuck, and which one you would like to kill, except since this podcast is about movies, we're going to do it for movies. Which movie would you marry, which movie would you fuck, and which movie would you kill, and why? So I've created a list here of three movies that kind of are a similar, very specific genre, and that is the all-night party high school movie genre. (laughs) Great. From the 80s, John Hughes' 16 Candles. From, well, from 70s, but made in the 90s, Dazed and Confused. And from the ni- pure '90s spectacle, can't hardly wait. Wow! So we have to oh choose which one you would you marry, marry, fuck, or kill. Okay. And now I have so to six, find out. Which Sixteen I would candles. Do. Sixteen candles. Can't hardly wait. And dazed and confused. Okay. Who would like to go first? Who knows? Right out the gate, what their heart tells them. Kill sixteen candles. Aww. Or sixteen candles. <laughs> it's illegal. First of all, <laughs> you perverts. I don't know if anyone <laughs> fucking perverts. Um, definitely fuck days didn't confuse. Okay. It's the best time to fuck around is high school and all that stuff, so that makes sense. But you would marry Can't Hardly Wait. Nineties Jennifer Love. That's Lefeu. actually a really good point. Are you one hundred? But we're not talking about the women in the movie. No, 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 we're look, talking look. about the movie no, itself. No, no, no. You can validate. <laughs> However you want. No, Why you want to marry I, fucker? Kill Jimmy's like things. the movie contains Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> therefore, so if you're Jennifer Love Hewitt is like the beautiful story. eyes of the body of the movie. I might have to wow. fuck Ethan Embry and all these other people, but, <laughs> but you're gonna make it to Jennifer <laughs> Love Hewitt. If you walked into a room and they said you can fuck '90s Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> But you have to fuck you have to have all sex of these with Jenna are. Elfman. You have to have sex with I don't know. This Jason like, Siegel's in that movie. I have mine. Okay, all right, go for Jake. It. What is your marry fuck kill? I would marry Sixteen Candles. Oh, Ooh, Sixteen okay. Sixteen Candles. It just very sweet. It's it's the type of movie I'd want to settle down with. Okay, nice. <laughs> illegally, illegally <laughs> settle illegally. down with. Jerry, we'd, have to, we'd have to wait a couple, <laughs> gross. couple years. <laughs> wait a couple years, <laughs> but then settle down. Jerry, exactly. Jerry Lee Lewis wise, you want to marry exactly. sixteen candles? Yeah. <laughs> um, fuck days and confused. Pretty much for the same reasons you wow. said. Wow, it's it's just you fun. wouldn't want to marry Parker Posey. You'd fuck Parker yeah, Posey. Exactly. <laughs> Poor Parker Posey. <laughs> I love her. She'll on. always have a spot at the Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Days and Confused is, is just fun. It's wild. It, it, it's great. It's a good time. And I would murder the fuck out of Can't Hardly Wait. <laughs> because <laughs> Whoa. I love the movie, but everyone in that movie are just horrible people for the most part huh. like like all the people like i didn't like in high school were pretty much at that party in that movie <laughs> oh. todd do you have your decision um i don't do you uh, you know what i'd fuck that cake in 16 candles right whoa <laughs> <laughs> it's a sexy cake i'd fuck that cake oh the one from 16 candles sure no the one over sure. there <laughs> no yeah, one's yeah, arguing oh, the sorry Sure. No one's arguing the say, fuckability of the cake. I'm gonna say what everybody was wasn't saying. It was Jay's birthday was that, recently. That, oh yeah. Look, I get down with cakes on my birthday. So no one talks about how fuckable that cake is, and it's a crime. All right. So fuck sixteen candles. You know what? Mary Days and confused. Oh yeah. Because. It'd be pretty dope to be married to everybody in the shenanigans of that movie. You'd have a pretty interesting life, man. Yeah. You got a yeah. whole mixture of characters. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun. And, uh, you know, Kill Can't Hardly Wait for probably the same reasons. <laughs> All right, Todd. Actually, I'm going to change. I originally was going to marry 16 Candles as well. Uh-huh. Because... Of Too bad, the, I got it. Of the three movies, sorry, uh, it's gone now. It is like like just the sweetest you and my favorite. Fuck, and can't wait. But I'm actually going to go with an angle here that I just like. It kind of came clear to me just now. Even though Days and Confused is made in the '90s, but it's a, it's about the '70s. Uh, I'm going to go with like decades here. Okay. Oh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and marry Can Hardly Wait. No, I'm going to marry. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to divorce Can Hardly Wait, <laughs> and then breaking her heart. Oh, wow. Revisit. <laughs> You're going to divorce Can't Hardly Wait and have a... That's right, that's right. And have an affair with 10 Things I Hate About You. I'm going to (laughs) divorce... No, you know what? Fuck it. I'll marry Can't Hardly Wait because I love the 90s and I feel like that movie is just like this quintessential 90s film. And I love everything about it. It's ridiculously goofy and all that kind of stuff. Do you want... 
to touch <laughs> my penis. <laughs> yes, can hardly wait. I will touch your penis. I will touch it. <laughs> Carrying on with the uh, uh, decades situation, I'm going to kill 16 Candles. Oh, man. Wow. Because I love 16 Candles, the film, but the 80s are just a ridiculous decade that I'm just going to murder and snuff it out of its misery. You know, <laughs> just, just like that birthday cake candles. <laughs> <laughs> and then that means that, that I'm going to fuck the shit out of the 70s. Wow. <laughs> I'm the only and one that wanted to do fuck some that Led cake. Zeppelin. Just fuck the shit out of the. Uh, yeah, do some Led like 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 smoke some weed, listen to some Led Zeppelin and some Pink Floyd, and whip out that paddle. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. They're into some kinky stuff. I wanna I wanna go. See, there. that's why I wanna marry him though. I get that every day, man. I get that paddle every day. But I still get to think about that one cake. That one cake that got away. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Let's go fuck episode. some cakes. A blockbuster <laughs> smash up. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, Jake, Jimmy. Thank you. So well, that much concludes our first episode of Blockbuster Smash Up, and boy, wasn't it weird. Weird. We'll be posting a new episode every other week, and if you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts, head over to partialarc.com, that website. That's <laughs> ARC with a C. Do it. Do it. It's of course. Fun. You can email us any questions at blockbuster smash up at gmail.com and guys if you've got some films that are really bad or really great shoot them to us let us know and we will try to forcibly push them together for you guys <laughs> and of course you can follow us on twitter and instagram at partial arc if you'd like to follow jimmy he says just google me mysterious jake says they can look me up in their mom's phone book easy directions for anyone to follow <laughs> of course you can follow todd on twitter and instagram at tg11 Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. Let's go home. <laughs>